Atlanta comes away with a 27-24 victory over the Chicago Bears last weekend. Welcome into the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. My boys, DJ Shockley's overly hyped today. I hope that's a precursor for the energy on the show. Uh, Arch wants to fight you now because you just put his shoulder out of place. That's Dave Arch. He literally just said, I need to go to the chiropractor. (laughs) (laughs) We're just talking about going to the chiropractor, and I guess DJ just took care of it for you. I forgot. Uh, So we good to go. Um, We're going to go ahead and talk about a little bit of uh, Falcons, shall we? Um, Here's what we are going to talk about. Cordero Patterson, CP in the house. He did a little something, something in the game. We'll talk about it here in just a second. We're going to break down the battle, how Atlanta got the victory over Chicago and Justin Fields. Injuries, unfortunately, that's a part of the game. Uh, Falcons are going to have to move forward with a couple significant injuries. Mm. We are going to go on the road, play the Washington Commanders. We'll have the fellas break down what Atlanta is going to be seeing in that matchup. And then maybe if we have time, a little bit of story time about an unbelievable play other than what CP did last weekend, maybe that we've seen throughout our career, if we have time. Let's do it. You guys good with that? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Quick reaction here, fellas. Hopefully you came prepared. All right. Mm -hmm. I need a word or two words. Or maybe a short phrase, but nothing long and drawn out. Or here, Arch, okay? Oh, it's All right. Immediately dunked it in my life. But but I'm gonna start with DJ. Oh, okay, so that go, way sir. you have time to be. He clear usually says concise. that to me, so I'm a surprise. <laughs> Cordero Patterson on his return touchdown is blank. The answer. The answer. Ooh, CP wow. can do it all. Can I elaborate? Just yes. for just a second. Okay. He said no elaborate. No, no. He, the answer is okay. The answer. That was perfect. That was it. Pause. Now you can explain. Talk about practice. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now you go can ahead. explain. CP. I mean, we see this dude every week. And I'm like, what can't this dude do? He's played running back. He's played slot. He's played receiver. He's kick return. I want to. He probably can go guard somebody. Probably can go rush the passer. Don't I mean, let a quarterback get, get hurt because he mean, might just go ahead and get yeah. behind center. CP okay. is ass <laughs> in anything you need. He probably gonna play tight end this week, so we're gonna be all right. All right, Dave. CP is. I'm just gonna give you a sound. Woo! Woo! Okay. <laughs> Here comes the freight train, baby. <laughs> How about yes, how sir. about the how about the kicker going like this as he ran? No, by? no pause to that. <laughs> Two twenty five went by him in a flash. I'm yeah. watching the game, guys, and my wife is right there, and um, I, I knew I was watching it back on record, so I knew it was about to happen. And I was like, watch this real quick. And yeah. she gets to the he gets to the point to where the kicker's there, and the Damn. only thing she says on the entire play goes, "Kicker doesn't have a chance. <laughs> None. <laughs> no chance." None. Um, so I'm gonna say CP is. Royalty. Very seldom throughout your NFL career do you get to be at the top of any NFL record book. And he ain't even done yet. Mm. Not to say that he's going to get very many more chances because we know the game has changed on kickoff return. But CP just said, guess what? I don't care. Three yards deep, I'm taking it out. I trust myself. So he is now in a class of his own. On top of the NFL, nine kickoff return for nine return touchdowns in his career alone by himself amazing accomplishment he had to bring he had to bring uh the ball's name back up so that's yeah what happened yeah by the way and and west dropped this and i didn't i didn't research it that deep but west talked about nine kickoff returns for touchdowns west of course my partner on falcon radio three of the nine have been returned against the chicago bears oh wow mm, How about yeah that? So, I mean, Very Chicago, cool. yeah. And they, wore the Chicago Bears loves, jersey a little bit. So, enjoys the NFC North. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of reminds me, maybe we'll get to it later, of a yeah. guy named Devin Hester that yeah. I saw on a Chicago Bears jersey that was pretty sure. lethal returning the ball as well. All right, let's break this down a little bit, Dave. I want to come to you. Um, Falcons seemingly back on track. Um, kind of give us your quick synopsis on how you think they got this one done. There's a number of plays that you can point to, some momentum swings, but what stuck out to you the most? Well, I think the, just the resilience of the team they continue to they got off to a fast start really good opening drive I think they may have faced one third down in the drive they really dictated from a tempo standpoint to a uh, uh, you know formation standpoint groups of guys in the game that was a really well called opening drive Marcus Mariota made a throw on the play that I said on the broadcast there's five guys maybe on the planet to make that throw Okay, he's on the dead run to his left, does not even get his Stupid hips throw. rotated. Stupid. S- sh- somehow swivels his hips or swivels his shoulders and gets Drake London in the back line. With the dude in his face. Like, yeah, guy on. breathing <laughs> down on him, losing ground. I mean, it was a – it's a big-time play. I mean, for all that we've been talking about or everybody's been talking about about the quarterback play, 
I thought he played some professional quarterback mm -hmm. this weekend. I thought he was very efficient with the ball, took care of the ball, and made some plays that only a few guys can make. I thought that was number one. And defensively, um, they were relentless this weekend defensively. There was, a, there was an idea that this guy could hurt you if you let him, yep. and they didn't let him. Yeah, DJ, I mean, we talked about this last week. One of the biggest keys, even though in, in, in Atlanta had struggled a little bit against the run two of the last few games against Carolina. Carolina had kind of pounded on him, but this was going to be a different animal. You're yeah. going to have the quarterback position and a really elusive runner. Really, it's his strong suit, right? That's what he does best right now. And he had a number of opportunities, and he still found his yards, but by and large, they limited the ones that can be really damaging, the ones that can really end up changing the course of the game. Before, I don't want to pigeonhole you into anything, but defensively, what did you see, and how were they able to have success against Justin Fields? I think it, it was an unbelievable job all those guys up front. And also, I mean, all, we all know the back end and the front end works together, but I thought it was the number of times where the way they rushed him was so important. I mean, there were times where we talked about it last week and it had to happen where you get upfield, but then those guys on the inside push. There was a couple ET stunts uh, up front. I think the sack Grady had was a, a tackle in stunt where Lorenzo comes inside and Grady, you know, loops around outside and Lorenzo's getting the pressure, but because Grady stayed at the proper depth, he was able just to fall back into it on it. There were a number of instances like that where they rushed him in a way where he had really nowhere to go. And you think about the the everybody talks about that scramble play he had. Well, they had pretty good contain on him. Like, you know, he went left and had to come back right, but there still were guys in his face. I thought they did a good job of rushing him. And you're talking about one sack in the first half and three in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. I think that was kind of the big, big point in the ball game of where he started to kind of feel the game because they were starting to hit him. They were starting to get after him. Because of injuries, because of maybe just necessity, a lot of these guys thrusted into the lineup early on in the season. And then now when you fast forward, when we're in the second half, of the, they played a lot of football, right? They always yeah. say when you get past, well, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 11 games, like you're not a rookie anymore, right? So these guys have – they've studied from veterans. They've been on the field. They've seen a lot of situations. And a lot of times, Arch, that's what it takes for a rookie to learn. Maybe it's making some mistakes. Maybe it's getting out of position one time, going back into the film room, and the veterans and the coaches saying, all right, in order to have success at this level, you've got to take this angle. Whatever the small adjustments may be, I think it's a great point that the young player's coming in and making a difference. So we talked about CP as far as just a, a quick little hitter at the top. Dave, let's just talk about it's it's kind of a dumb question to say what he means to this team, but you just never know where he's going to affect the game. Maybe it's running the football. Maybe it's catching passes out of the backfield, traditional wide receiver or tight end set. And then all of a sudden, they just happen to throw him back there on a kickoff return. And he makes one of the biggest plays of the season, maybe for Atlanta. It's hard for an opposing team to respond to the momentum gained by such a huge return. It's almost like the guy, even though he hasn't returned a whole lot of kicks as of late, he just has that vision that is just ingrained in his head throughout <laughs> yeah. his career because he knew exactly where that seam was going to open up, Arch. Yeah. He, he didn't take the bait to say, oh, something flashes, I'm going to go out to the right. He knew exactly where the seam was going to open up. He trusted it, and then as soon as he saw it, he just took was off. That, was that a play on where about like CP flash flashes? Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. I see so what nice. you did there. Yeah, a little yeah. superhero stuff there. <laughs> um yeah, the, the vision, trust is a great word because I thought that uh, Marquise Williams and his staff, Coach Hoffman, those guys did a really good job of making a couple adjustments. I thought CP was about ready to set sail on a couple before that. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of guys, there was a guy that ran through, uh, they had Kwiatkowski, I think, trying to block a guy, and the guy kept getting clean, and he was in CP's face, kind of stutter stepped his feet, couldn't really get up to full speed. Once he hits about 20, 25, about the 30 yard line, He's kicking it into gear, yeah. and he couldn't quite get to that spot. They made an adjustment, got that guy blocked, and so he trusted, like you're talking about, he trusted that guy was blocked. So when he got to 25 to 30, then all of a sudden the accelerator came because he knew the guy wasn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. And he trusted the crease and hit it. And, of course, the kicker waved at him and see you later. <laughs> Well, he, he kind of got into the vision. He got yeah. in the way, maybe. Um, I don't think he got in the way. I don't think he, he wanted to be in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that kicker's seen any highlights lately, he's like, um. Hey, Cole, you see I, what he's done to uh, uh, he's, he's done this to up. linebackers. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. this is not my deal. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm stay out of this. next week, bro. That's what he said. <laughs> All right, so you mentioned a joke, you know, kind of play next week. Unfortunately, in the NFL, 
injuries happen. Um, and you kind of alluded to it, Dave, so let's go back and kind of visit this because Kyle Pitts goes down with an injury, gets put on uh, the reserve list, so they're going to be without his services. And you kind of alluded to it, maybe this is a time where CP gets more involved in the passing game, maybe kind of turns into a little bit of Kyle Pitts. What is Atlanta going to miss without him in the lineup, and where do you suppose the passing goes, game goes from here? Well, in shock, and I will tell you, when you take one of your weapons off the field, now it changes the dynamic of what I'm looking at as a quarterback. Sure. Now, all of a sudden, Kyle's effect on coverage is now that he's not out there. Mm. So how can I affect that? Well, the guy that's got maybe the most notoriety to him is Cordell Patterson. So yep. now Caleb Huntley and Tyler Algier are hand and run, running the football, the bulk of it. And now all of a sudden, CP becomes that slot guy at six foot three, big time target guy can run, creates problems much like Kyle would. Mm -hmm. Drake London will slide inside, I would assume, and play a little bit more slot stuff as well, because of the emergence of Demir Bird has made some plays over the last recent weeks. We saw Cordero Hodge make a big catch in this game, so those guys are going to have to pick up the load. Oz can have to pick yep. up the load, maybe yep. outside the numbers. And now London at six foot five or six four slides inside along with CP to give you those big uh, big receivers. Ferkshire will be up. He's a guy that's a good receiver. We saw him in, in training camp emerge as a guy that can catch the football. Michael Pruitt's going to get more of an opportunity. I got I think as a guy that's got more in the tank yep. than what we've seen. Yep. Has one touchdown grab on the year. So yeah, we're going to have to you know spread it out over some guys. But I think. You're probably looking at London and CP as guys that can operate in the slaughter. And DJ, we've been in these situations before as players. Like, it's not, there's no time to like feel sorry for yourself. No time to say, what are we going to do without Kyle? Just like Arch talked about, it's about adjustments. So, where do we go from here? Different guys have to step up and you just have to pick up the load. Somebody, you, they've got guys that can be weapons. You yep. mentioned like CP is is probably the closest thing that looks almost like Kyle. He's got the height, he's got the strength, he's got the route running ability. He's probably even got an edge on him because he's got the experience. Yeah, and I think one guy that goes under the radar who Arch has mentioned is Pruitt. The guy is athletic, the guy can run, the guy can move. He, he's a bigger body guy as well. And CP is absolutely going to be used in multiple ways. I mean uh, – <laughs> We watched the 49ers, you know, last night play, and, you know, Debo's using every facet of the game. Christian McCaffrey, I think it's going to be similar to what you have to do now. But I think the biggest thing is he, he, he added so much in the past game as far as the attention that he, that he gained. So mm -hmm. I think now you move another guy out there who people already know about in 8-4 and CP, and he's going to attract similar attention because when the ball's in his hand, I mean, think about it. We threw him a little slip screen out there on third down, and he goes and picks up the first down, picks up seven, eight yards, and bowls a couple guys over. Those are the little things that you can do to get him the football right away. That's, you know, not as taxing as turning around and handing it off to him. You got two backs who you absolutely trust back there. Now you use him on the outside. So there are going to be some guys who can make some plays. We've seen – we thought Bird and OZ were just deep threats. We've seen them guys catch, you know, underneath stuff, catch over routes, catch whatever it may be. You have guys who can make plays. Now is a good instance for now the ball can be distributed all the way around in this ball game. I think in that first series, Archie may better correct me, in the first series, I think seven different guys either touched or ran the football in that particular drive. That's the distribution you like. I think this – will continue to grow now not having, you know, see, uh, not having uh, uh, pits, pits on the field. Yep. So how many guys can they get involved in the passing game against the Washington Commanders? We've talked about it already. We talked about the Bears game. They've enjoyed it for their 24 hours or so. It's time to move forward. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on the Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search, so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. Falcons are going to go on the road. They're going to face the Washington Commanders, a team that's kind of played two different seasons. Okay, yeah. won their opener. They proceeded to lose four straight games. They were, you know, in the dumps of the NFL, and then all of a sudden they make a couple of changes. They win five of their last six games, not to mention a victory over the Philadelphia Eagles at Philadelphia, who was undefeated at the time. 
Um, and they've got to be feeling a different sense of where their season is at. So, Dave, yeah. kind of walk us through what Atlanta is going to see with Washington this weekend. You guys have done such a great job of breaking down the opponents in previous weeks. What animal do they face this week? Well, defensively, this is one of the better teams in the league. They're, they're playing with a confidence that would indicate who where they were drafted. They've got four number one picks or five number one picks oh in their front goodness. seven. Their front four are all number one picks. Two of those guys <laughs> from Alabama, they are getting after people up front. And, and, and it's not they're having to blitz people. They're, able to, they're actually playing to their, their expectation, if yeah. you will. I think they're third in the league uh, in, in defense. They're third in the league, I think, on third down defense. They're one of the top teams against the run. They're defending the pass equally as well. I think teams are averaging, I don't know, 212 yards a game in passing, which puts them 10 or 10th or 12th in the league against the pass. So overall, that puts them in the top five defensively in the National Football League. That's really kind of where their bread's been buttered. That's what they did to, to Philly. They limited Philadelphia. Now, give – Give the offense some credit. They are running the ball with some success, too. There's a, another Alabama player. They like drafted <laughs> Brian, Alabama. Brian players. Robinson. Brian Jr. Robinson has run the football <laughs> extremely well. And Taylor Heineken, the old local product, Collins Hill High School, yep. has stepped in. He's had opportunities before. Remember, he made a couple of plays year. against Atlanta yeah. last year, running Man. around and scrambling, throwing the ball up for grabs and winning a game. So uh, they're playing with confidence. I think that's the number one thing, Shock, is it seems like. You know, when you get a couple, when you mentioned, what, five of six. So yeah. all of a sudden, what you were doing before kind of is gone. What we're doing now is kind of who we are. And so yep. there's a confidence level there. McLaurin's a big-time receiver. But confidence Scary really. Scary Terry. Yeah, a lot of high-level confidence for them right now. And so I think that that's kind of carrying them some. And you're talking about this defense. In that six-game span, they haven't given up more than 21 points. Mm -hmm. That tells you how good this defense is playing. Archer's spot on. They're only giving up uh, 103 rush yards a game, which is six in the National Football League. That tells you how good they are defensively. And the confidence that that, that Heineke has came in and played with is obvious because he became the guy now. They had a chance to go back to Carson Wentz, but this guy gave them something else that everybody around him – has playing a lot better. So this is going to be a, a, a tough task going up there because they're playing good football. And you mentioned up front, we always talk about the the, the, the trenches part of the game, being able to run the football. This is going to be a game where we're going to see just how physical it can be and will be because they're going to want to bring it. Yeah. How much confidence do you guys think that our team takes from this last weekend? Just throwing it out there, kind of a topic here. Um, normally for Atlanta to win, it's limited possessions and own the football. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen this weekend to the tune of about eight minutes where you didn't – they had the ball more than you did. Mm -hmm. You turned the ball over more than they did, and you still won the football game. Now it lost it, third down. Yeah, it lost third down. <laughs> yeah. So, and now, granted, you had a special team score. Um, they they got a couple opportunities special teams-wise as well, so that maybe that balances out. Mm -hmm. So where does the Falcon confidence level sit right now? To me, it would be in a good spot right now after – Kind of a disappointing, a real disappointing loss on Thursday night. No, I would agree with you. They they should feel confident, but they also, to your point, should know, especially in the offensive side of the ball, that that they're going to have their hands full up front, right? Like this is not necessarily going to be a game where they can manhandle the front four, the front seven for Washington because you mentioned all the dudes, right? Like in the NFL, you could sit here and talk about scheme and coaching all you want. But at the end of the day, you got to have some dudes now, right? Mm -hmm. You got to have some players, and they've got some players on that side of the ball. But at the end of the day, DJ, they can't they can't veer too far away from their identity, no, no. right? Their identity is still run the football, let Marcus get out on the perimeter, make some plays with his legs, and then make a couple of those throws that he made last week on occasion, some point somewhere throughout the game that help them move the chains, that help them get that explosive play. They can't just say, oh, this is a good front seven. We got to start chucking the ball all over the field. I thought he was decidedly more aggressive, shock, in the run game this yeah. week. What did yeah. you think? Did you? I, I thought he was too. I mean, just uh, there were opportunities where I think, because uh, listening to you talk to him last week, he said there were times where I have to play better. Or I just forced the issue. And this week, you can see it decidedly. So when he decided to go or make a play, he did it with confidence. And that's what is so good about this guy. And we talked about it last week when everybody said, oh, should you make the change, all this kind of stuff. I said, the stuff we've seen from him that has been good, the stuff that we've seen him make the plays has been when he's had that decidedly confidence, say, all right, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go take off. I'm going to go run. I'm going to make this throw. 
And there were some in that game where you said, this is why you're still riding mm -hmm. with Marcus because he has done this, he's shown this. And I think to your point about the identity, it's so huge because last week I thought we showed that type of identity in a, in a tough, hard fall game where everything was tight, it was close. Offensively, you did everything you need to do, especially run the ball, Marcus making plays. Defensively, you're talking about, okay, they were pointing a game where you're down by 10, but in that second half, you put the clamps on them. You don't allow a score in the third quarter. This is a Bears team that hasn't happened to all year long. You close the game out. How many one-score games this team's been in? Now you may be able to finish it. This is a direct, direct correlation of how the confidence and how this team should be feeling good about it because you're in a game where it could have easily went the opposite way, but you continue to fight, and there you go. You got you come out with a win. Yeah, we, we've talked so much about offense in this matchup, and, and don't get me wrong, it's going to be a challenge on defense for Atlanta. Uh, because, as you mentioned, Washington wants to try to run the football. This is going to be a little different. They're, even though Heineke will run with it, he's no Justin Fields, right? Yeah. So this, the, the goal is to be, be stout up front, win the line of scrimmage, limit the running game, and then I think you have to make sure that McLaurin doesn't beat you. He is, they're going to throw the ball to him a lot. He, doesn't, he hasn't punched it in the end zone a bunch this year, but he is a dynamic receiver, and he can make some things happen. Right. Coming into that Bears game, offensively, they were one of the hottest teams in the league. Mm -hmm. They had three games where they had scored 30-plus points coming in, and even though they lost those games, they were the hottest team in the league, and you held them to 24. You held them to seven points in the second half. Mm -hmm. That is a huge confidence builder because everybody's talking about how good this offense has been, how good Justin Fields has been. Mm -hmm. And you're stymied. Whether he's hurt or not in the second half, that's irrelevant. You did your job, and you held them to it. Yeah, Washington's good up front. Yeah, they're pretty good on defense. But this is a totally different game. It's a totally different team. Who says you can't come in there and dominate them yep. and, you know, stifle them just as you did last week when the Bears came to town? Yeah, we got to pay attention to, to what the coaches are doing in-game because this staff has been as good as any staff I've seen. I've been doing these games for 20 years about adjusting in-game. Mm. They made halftime adjustments. What were you getting beat with? You were getting beat with quarterback sweep. They were running the sweep, ran it where he walked in, didn't even didn't even touch him when he scored right in the first half. Did you see quarterback sweep in the second half? Correct. They tried it twice and filtered him back inside, and he got his rear end tattooed a couple mm -hmm. times coming to the inside. And all of a sudden, that started to kind of go, that went away. <laughs> okay, Their adjustments to secure the edge, set the edge, turning back to the inside. No quarterback wants to run up in there. I don't Dude. care if you're 6'3", 225 or not. There's a lot of guys hunting in there, and they're looking for your rear end. So – you don't like I, I, the adjustments. I think that this staff continues to make in game or at halftime. We've seen it from an offensive standpoint, where you're down 21 to nothing to Tampa, and all of a sudden you make some adjustments, and here comes the run game. You start getting the run game. We've seen it all year long. There's only been one game that got away from me, and it got away from you quick in Cincinnati. Everything else has been right there for you to take, even the Thursday night game. You had that long drive, throw a touchdown pass, get a three and out. You got the football with a chance to go tie yep. it or win it. Yeah. Even at your worst, you've had a chance to win a football game, and it's because of what the staff's doing and the ability of these guys to absorb changes in, in, in game or at halftime. Good call. Absolutely. Continue to make those strategic adjustments uh, in the second half and continue to believe, right, like you guys talked about. They've played with some momentum, believe that they can go on the road and they can beat this team because you could say all you want, but – Every game in the NFL is a grind. There's no not doubt. too many times you can circle it and be like, yeah, we're going to win that game. Yeah, I mean, okay. it just that doesn't happen in the NFL. So Atlanta Falcons go on the road. Falcons at 5-6, and six, facing Washington Commanders at 6-5. and five. Guys, before we sign off, I've mentioned it at the top, unbelievable plays. So we mm -hmm. saw one last weekend with Cordell Patterson. And I want you guys to give me an unbelievable play. And now we're talking about like – an unbelievable play, so it can't just be like something that was really cool. Like it's got to be unbelievable. All right. Can't be really cool too. Can yeah, really I guess. Cool. Gotta go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Arch. Really cool. The semantics. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mentioned in my oh, career really cool. um, <laughs> being on special teams. I faced a lot of those guys that Cordero Patterson just ended up passing. Right. Josh Cribbs, Devin Hester, even played Rack, with one here was there ever in any Atlanta. Fear when you, it's just you and them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you actually you want you want me to give you a quick story. Yeah, you want to talk yeah. about fear. I'll even t I'm going to go back to my college days. You want to know a guy that I feared that I played against in college? Went to a school up there in Michigan that was pretty oh, good. Yeah. His name was Charles Woodson. Okay, oh, 
And I have this picture in my garage. I don't have it hanging up anymore because it's gotten old. But there's a picture of me running downfield on punt coverage. And it's me, one other linebacker, and Charles Woodson in the oh. middle of the picture. And it is a beautiful picture. I got it because it was C. Wood, and I knew he was going to be special. <laughs> Ask me if I was anywhere close to time. <laughs> Not a chance. What do, you, what do you mean the picture got old? I mean, whatever the picture. Oh, it's. I mean, it's. It was in <laughs> it a cheap old. frame. Like the corners are starting to curl <laughs> up and everything. It's not wall worthy anymore. Okay. okay, Arch. So anyway, my play real quick is the play from Michael Vick when we played against Minnesota up in Minnesota, where he scrambles, goes oh, through yeah, the middle. Two defenders end up colliding into each other. He goes full speed into the end zone. To me, that was one of the more unbelievable plays that I've seen from. I mean, you could you could make a laundry list of plays that Michael Vick made, but that was one of those that the, you can watch that highlight today, and you're like, man, that dude was yeah. sick. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. Unbelievable so plays that you guys remember, either from your careers or just that you guys watched as a fan. I'll go to um, the guy who was here, who my man Julio Jones, the catch he made versus Carolina on top of Luke Keekley's head, oh, on yeah. top of two guys right there. <laughs> and he goes Snatch up it, and he just snatches it up. And then he goes to score. Most guys that with, catch it, they may fall the down. <laughs> yeah. With the 100 meter finish. You seen both finishing at record time. When I saw that, I was like, that's stupid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do you do that? And then go, this is another 10, 15 million dollar guy who is the best in the league. And you made him look like he was your kid brother. <laughs> it was unbelievable to watch. I, I, I was, I, mouth was open. Yeah, All right, no, I, that makes Julio sense. against Panthers. What you got, Dave? So I, I mean, I, I guess I can dive into to, to the archives here. And I spent some time this last week. We had a charity event down at the stadium uh, for some people, and my old teammate Billy White Shoes Johnson mm -hmm. was there. Yep. Shoes. And Shoes made a lot of plays in his career. He's on the 75th anniversary team. He's on the 100th anniversary team. I mean, the guy should be in the Hall of Fame, one of the great kick returners of all time. But he made a play on a Big Ben play against the 49ers in Old Fulton County Stadium. A play where Bart hung the ball deep to to shoes, and, and a lot of guys running down the field. Stacy Bailey, Floyd Hodge were all in the running down. Ronnie Lotts down there, Dwight Hicks, they're all down there trying to defend it. And the ball comes down, and somehow it gets between everybody at about the two yard line, and it bounces off of Floyd Hodge, one of the Falcon re receivers' knee, bounces up in the air and goes backwards. And Billy Johnson, looping around, catches it and somehow gets in the end zone eee. on the last play of the game to win the game against the Niners. Oh. Just one of the Big Ben plays that kind of live in lore here in Atlanta. Awesome. There's been a lot of Big Ben plays that yeah, have worked awesome. out for Atlanta. But that was one where Billy Johnson uh, made a play. Arch for the record, that is cool. That was pretty cool. It, it, was pretty I'll cool. give you a cool one real quickly. In light of we're going to celebrate uh, John Madden, uh, yeah, for yeah. this week and yeah. Thanksgiving, uh, on Thanksgiving. He loved the Turduncan and all the stuff that yeah. went along with that. I remember standing in the end zone. This was when I was with Philly, and uh, Jim McMahon and I were out throwing the ball a little bit, and, and Madden walked out in the end zone and threw his cup of coffee in the end zone. And I looked over at him, kind of gave him a cross, like, oh, sorry, just marking my territory. Mm -hmm. I said, you're too late. He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, Seth Joyner pees in a cup, and he sprinkles it on the end zone pylons to keep the team out of the end zone. The opposition of the end zone. That's His surreal. mouth dropped open like, no. <laughs> when does he do it? I got to have a camera crew down here to see that. <laughs> it was classic. Yeah, no I, 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 in yeah. true John Madden fashion. Oh, too, it was it was classic. Yeah, yeah, John Madden. God rest his soul. One of the greats of all time. Just celebrating John Madden on uh, this week where they're going to celebrate him on. Uh, for the That's NFL. pretty cool. So that's just a few of our unbelievable, awesome, Fantastic plays that we've been a part of. Witnessed, cool, cool seen, plays. Cool, cool plays. plays. Yeah, okay. uh, maybe we'll get a chance to see another one this weekend. No doubt. As Atlanta goes on the road to face the Washington Commanders, as I mentioned, five and six against six and five. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT and T. Continue to like, subscribe, review on Spotify, iTunes, AtlantaFalcons.com, and YouTube, or however you get your podcast material. If you get it any other way, let me know because those are the four that I know for about. Show. He's Arch. He's Shock. I'm Rack. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make a play, Shock. Make a play. <laughs> <laughs>